started here. Um, so, raise your hand if you've been to one of my classes before. Awesome. Great. Um, we're going to look at some similar <laughs> things that you guys have seen before, but we're also going to discover some new positions and kind of talk about some new concepts. Uh, the first thing I want to do with opening the class is talk about, if we're talking about creating pressure, we have to know the defenses that we're running into, right? So there's like three lines of defense that the person has to offer you. They have their feet, so you have to get past the feet first. Then they have the knees, then they have the arms. So this is the idea is like, we have to break down the line of defense to be able to break inside the space and control what we want. Okay, um, and that's why we look a lot at the Lovato style pressure passing because stuffing one of the feet inside the legs is a great option to start negating at least that first line of defense and force them into poor angles that allow you to get inside the hip and start really getting pressure for the pass. All right. So the first thing I want to do today with you guys, I've traditionally kind of started by stepping into the position, um, but today what I want to do is kind of more complementary to what we did from the half guard class. I want to put you in a perfect position first so you feel where you should be, then we can start entering the position so you can make small adjustments and you already know where those adjustments should be made, okay? So the first thing I want to do is make sure one leg is in between my legs. All right, this is the most simple part. Now we have to start looking at the angles. So what I want you to do is take the foot that's inside the legs and try and put your toe in the armpit. Now I want you to squat, stuff the leg to the other side and put your chest in front of it. Okay, notice here how I'm not like squatted neutral. I'm at like this 45 degree angle where I can start driving a lot of pressure into his body. Okay, so again, step up. One of those legs goes in the middle. I'm gonna make sure my toe goes all the way to the armpit. Now I can start squatting and stuffing that leg to the inside of my chest so I can use my whole body to get pressure and angle going here. Okay, this is the position. Let's look at it for You're just gonna take the time to feel as heavy as you can here. Like, okay, this is my resting position. If I had no hands available for grips, like I feel comfortable and strong here. You feel like I can just start leaning in and getting heavy. Okay. All right, let's try it on two. One, two. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully you guys had enough time there to start, you know, with some reps, you start to feel like, okay, I'm starting to kind of get heavy here. Again, key details, you guys, like, let's just look at this from when the person's sitting up, okay? See how I'm landing almost in the same exact position, exactly. Of course, we're gonna deal with some sort of reaction here. And that's why we have to be in the right space first. Because otherwise, the whole job is trying to design some perfect pass to pass some type of guard. And that's way too hard to learn jiu-jitsu that way. You need to learn foundational positions and angles so that you know where to be at the right time. Right? And that has very little to do with just like the string of moves that you know in your head. It's like gaining a... a a sensitivity to the reactions that you're going to receive by being in the right spots instead of turning it into a fight all the time, right? So when I have my whole body in the game here, now, let's turn here. <clears throat> now we can start looking at what type of reactions are we going to deal with, all right? The first one I want to do is they're turning back into me. Yes. 
already being in the right spot presents me with a perfect, beautiful cross knee pass, okay? When I'm already this far inside the hip and the knee is here, when they start to shift their angles, my hip drops in place. So there's never any time for that knee to come in the center, okay? Of course, I'll be leaving my hands off the floor because I don't want to put weight off of him. I'll usually grab here and even stuff the hand. Again, I want to try and deal with the last line of defense that I'm going to be thinking about, which is this hand trying to push the knee out or back in, grabbing collars, whatever. This hand probably becoming a frame trying to push me out. All right, so I'm going to stuff that. I get control here, and now I start smashing. Notice how I never drop my hip to the mat. Never slid through, okay? The cross knee pass is accomplished correctly by using the knee and the shin to push the legs behind you, just like a proper mount, all right? So we're never trying to get like around the leg. We want them to eat that pressure the whole time. Let's just look at like a similar concept here. When I go for my mount, I don't want to come here and do this one. My whole goal is to put so much pressure on his thighs that it smashes his legs flat and now he has nothing to recover with. He can't turn the hip, he's smashed flat the whole time. So it's the same idea when I'm already inside this pocket, he starts to turn. I'm using my knee and my shin to push back the entire time so it flattens his hip out. Then I don't stop. I'm gonna keep running him out and smashing him back flat, right? This is like, he's gonna have the frame probably in. Yes, perfect. And now we go back to our mounting options. So from the same position that you guys already worked on, all I want this person on the bottom to do, not, not with the hands, I'm gonna teach you. Put your toes to the floor. Now use your toes to switch the hip. Yes, there's the angle. At a higher level, the person's not gonna be putting their hands on the floor anyway. The guy's gonna be making little hip switches with the toes. So we're here, we got him tight. Yes. Get used to dropping your hip in that space. Pin the hand. You can grip the collar. Use your shin and your knee to push the hips all the way around. This is pressure because I'm still on top. I'm still moving forward. I'm creating my 45 degree angles and I'm heavy the whole time. All right, let's try it on two, one, two. Okay, so we're gonna just deal with two very common reactions because they're gonna happen all the time from this position. All right. Here, let me zoom. So again, the reason I'm stepping so far into the armpit, you guys, is because it helps me get inside that hip originally. When he starts to turn now, I'm already inside the space. But if I just kind of stepped in and I'm like trying to get heavy here, and there's no pressure or tension, as soon as he moves, I'm so far away from my goal. And now we're experiencing all this like, this type of angle that's gonna blow everybody's knee out. Right, and you just keep forcing it because you're like, oh, I just gotta get a little bit more out and I pass but that hardly ever happens, right? So now we'll look at like the next most common reaction. They don't like this angle. Maybe they wanna start lifting with this foot on the inside, yes, and then off balancing me, taking me to the other side, okay? We're gonna do a little float with our outside leg and it's gonna come right in between. Just like if I was leg weaving with my arm, it's gonna be my knee instead, okay? So we're here, he starts to lift, boom. Again, where did I land? 45 degree angle, okay? Right through the shoulder. Again, not taking any pressure off. Very similar position to the last one. Underhook on the arm. If it's nogi, I'm just gonna cup. And same thing, C-clamp on that wrist, all right? Now, this is where the magic comes in. Everybody over here. We 
You were here, he lifted. Boom. Control the position, all right? Now, the last piece is getting this knee inside this space. I have to clear the knee because if I try and go before that, he's gonna bring the knee up and I get stuck again. So we float it into the position here. I'm gonna bring this knee inside this space and now it's mount time. Boom. This is one of the most beautiful combinations. If you're a competitor, it's very hard to come up with a better combination of movements. This is like three points to four points. You're seven points ahead on the mount right away. Very hard to come back from that in competition. Extremely mentally defeating, okay? So here, he starts to lift. Boom. Inside, I pin. You see how it's all right there. The knee comes inside that space. And now, mount. All right, let's go with like, anybody have any questions? Like, give me your biggest doubts, what ifs, all this stuff. You just have to have something. What if they do this? I couldn't feel like I got heavy. When do you grab the, the wrist? Do you grab it while you're passing? Perfect, yes. Um, let me get this. <laughs> there we go on my, on my white belt side. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, he starts to lift. I'm coming in and like I'm doing it all at once if I can. Like this is uh, you know, if you guys have watched Mario, I'm sure he's been talking about drilling. And he's gonna do the drilling class, the uh, workshop later. And this is a huge piece of the success that my brother and I have had. Professor Lobato taught us how to drill at purple belts and how to create sequences of drilling because I didn't have an instructor ever. You know, where we were at, we just, we would fly out to Oklahoma, learn from him for two weeks, fly back to the coast and drill it for six months. Fly back out, and we did that forever until we were the black belts that were teaching our students, right? So it was different and we had to put different amounts of work in. There wasn't as much, there was no YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, none of this stuff that just downloads information to you or you just want to search whatever you want, you know? So you had to put the work in, literally. <laughs> so when we're in this position, I'm like, boom, here, right? I don't want to let go of this wrist until I've got my knee inside. If I ever let go before that, of course the hand's gonna stop all this. So I'm gonna to have to go back to, oh, I need to remember, yep. Boom, Get that pressure. Then here, another key detail is I don't want to shrug the shoulder right away because it doesn't allow me to go any further. I just stop there and now I have to climb. I need space. So instead I rake here and then float to the mount. And even better, I'd be finishing like here over the head, ready for all of that Lovato style crushing stuff. All right? Any other questions from that? That was a good one. Okay. All right. And I want to do one other thing just quickly. It's kind of, 
So we try and step in, and we're trying to stuff the foot, but the foot comes here. This is going to happen, okay? The other most common thing that's going to happen when we're trying to play the headquarters is stuffing the foot. And of course, he knows he doesn't want the foot stuffed, so he's going to put it on my thigh and start trying to stretch me and open up the guard game, all right? So when I feel that, I need to take a big step forward and drop right inside the hip. Now, my hips are shifting as I'm doing this, and you can see how, again, I'm at a 45 degree angle, all right? We're not gonna be able to have time to go into the passes, so I'm gonna show you guys a couple, just a few different passes as far as ideas from here. Obviously, the easiest one is like stepping out. I prefer actually not to do this one because it creates a lot of scrambles and takes the most pressure off of them, okay? So, Instead, I'm looking for my double underhook, and I'm gonna come cross knee with the knee that's on the floor. The knee that your brain is telling you you shouldn't be using. You're thinking this side, but now look at how the hip opens. His knee's gonna come inside that space. Yes. So instead, we're here. I'm gonna pop up on my head, and this knee comes through because there's never any space for his knee to stop it. So headquarters position, we started from here. The foot just came out. Boom. Dropping inside, getting heavy, head and arm. I'm gonna come underneath, double underhook. Post the head on the floor so I have something to base off with. My knee comes through. Okay. Now real easy, what if? Boom, I came inside. What if this arm stayed in tight? I can't get the other underhook. We're catching the head, and now we bring the knee through for a mount. So we're stepping into the headquarters. Yes, dropping into that space. He's trying to get in, he's staying tight. Catch my head, shins pressing down the whole time. Mount strong. Right? So you have your cross knee and your mount. The two common things we've been looking at the whole class. Let's try it on two, one, two. Um, you know, this, is, this is what I love to do with my life, you guys. I decided a long time ago to burn the boats and that all I was gonna do was jujitsu. It was a rough go for many years in the beginning, but uh, if you keep going and keep pursuing, you never fail, right? So, um, this is the joy of my life is to travel and teach and share my knowledge. Of course, being at home, I, I love being at home with my team and my family. They, they help build the strength so that I can go out and do what I do. You know? um, thank you all for joining. I hope you guys are having as great of a time as I am here at the Zen Camp. Uh, hopefully I'll see lots of you again soon. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that we worked on today, please feel free to grab me. When you're seeing, ask a question anytime even if we're not on the mat, about jujitsu, life, whatever. Um, one of my greatest successes, my brother and I, when we were coming up, all the way from white belt, we just treated white belts and black belts the same. Right? That's why I love the Globetrotter community so much. There's a, there's a lot of value in not putting somebody, you know, you see all these actors and these you know, sports players and everything, and we put them up here on a pedestal all the time. But, you know, I've met lots of these people. I get to hang out with Rafael Lovato all the time. We're like true friends, you know. We've, we've built a friendship from the beginning, and so he's not just my instructor. We actually hang out and chill, and uh, everybody doesn't get that experience, but it just shows you that everybody's just here to try and enjoy and learn and grow, and this is a perfect place for that, these camps and the people that join them. And just thank you guys for helping make this a wonderful experience for me.